everybody, welcome back to Law Hero. My name is Jen and today we are looking at law officers in the context of um, going back to basics. So what do I mean when I say law officers? Well, of course, I am bigging up my homies, Burnham McCutcheon for breaking it down for me. So um, we're going to start off with the two law officers in the Irish state, which is the Attorney General and the DPP. Hmm. Um, so how did all of this come about? Well, basically, prior to 1922, um, a number of lawyers, barristers, were appointed to represent the government. And um, I remember actually learning about this in history. They would sit in the Phoenix Park. And to some extent, the general public in matters of law and legal opinion. And the tradition was carried over when the state was established in 1922. So we have the Attorney General, which also incorporates the Chief State Solicitor's Office and the DPP. So the Attorney General, you'll know if you've studied constitutional law, um, is an office created under Article 30 of Bunrock and Heron. And basically, they advise the government on matters of law and legal opinion and they perform any additional functions conferred by law. The Attorney General is appointed by the President of Ireland on the nomination of the Taoiseach and must retire from office on the resignation of the Taoiseach. So the office of Taoiseach is tied to the Attorney General. So if the Taoiseach goes, you go. I did not know that. The AG is the principal advisor to the government and a close confidant of the head of the executive also echoes the position of the Attorney General in Ireland pre-1922. Indeed, the title Attorney General was adopted by the first such legal advisor to the government, Hugh Kennedy, who later became Chief Justice. Very interesting. And um, usually the Attorney General is a practicing member of the Bar and Senior Council. And they're also conventionally called the leader of the Bar i.e. they're the most senior person in the bar. There is no rule requiring the attorney, the attorney to cease private practice as um, attorney general, but they have done in recent years. The attorney general advises the government and individual departments and attends meetings of the cabinet. They provide advice on constitutional legal issues, whether its proposed legislation is compatible with the constitution or EU law, or whether uh, international treaties can be ratified. The Office of Parliamentary Counsel to the Government, which is the OPC, is part of the Office of Attorney General and its function is to draft bills and certain statutory instruments on behalf of the government and ministries of government. That being said, and I've said to you all in my experience, I have seen a lot of that work being outsourced to private law firms because, like, like anything in Ireland, they don't have enough expertise in this body. Now, they're probably have gotten more over the years but we'll say for things like construction or finance um, or so environmental issues these lawyers they're probably public you know public or uh, public infrastructure they know that kind of stuff but really like detailed areas of law they would need help from a law firm Prior to 1976, all serious crimes were taken in the name of the Attorney General you might have noticed that from your criminal law um, notes but since then, it's been transferred to the DPP, and we're going to look at that in a minute. Although the role is political, um, the Attorney General has to act independently of the government of the day and act in the public good. We're just going to make, we're just going to finish this video, and then we're going to go walkies. <gasps> walkies! Out. Yeah! Walkies. The Attorney General had first refusal, refusal on any judicial vacancy that arose in the High Court or Supreme Court. And there was a highly publicised debate on that because obviously it fettered their discretion so it's gone now state is involved in so much uh, litigation so like um, civil and criminal 
they brought in a chief state solicitor who is the civil servant and is solicitor to the attorney general, the DPP, as well as government departments. Um, so the chief state solicitor no longer since 2001 deals with criminal matters. That is only for the DPP. Before 2005, state solicitors were local solicitors who would represent the state, but now this has been transferred to the DPP. So although they are appointed by the government, the office is that of a civil servant, so the director does not resign when a government falls, unlike the Attorney General. This is an important element of continuity um, in their office. The director may be removed by the government, but only on consideration of a report into the director's health or conduct prepared by a committee comprising of the Chief Justice, a Judge of the High Court and the Attorney General. There is an exception under the Prosecutions of Offences Act 1974, that's how the DPP was set up, um, that the government may by order declare that the director's function in relation to criminal matters be performed by the Attorney General where the government is of the opinion um, that it is expedient in the interest of national security to do so. But since the act came into force, this has never happened. Okay, last point on the DPP before poor old Saki here goes mad is that under Section 7.1 of the 1974 Act, the AG and the DPP must ensure the distribution of retainer of panel of barristers to act on their behalf and on a fair and equitable distribution. Apart from indicating there must be a fair distribution of business between them, Section 7 also says that much of the work that both offices do is done by barristers in private practice rather than by barristers as paid employment of the state. In relation to criminal prosecutions, there is no equivalent of salaried officials entitled public prosecutors. You know in the US are like, I'm going to give you to the public prosecutor. Yeah, we don't have that here. And as we said, when we had these like quasi public prosecutors, local people who would take cases on behalf of the state in criminal matters, all of those people now have been incorporated into the DPP. So it's always DPP versus and whoever barrister on behalf of the DPP. Okay, everybody. The final installment in this chapter is called Legal Education Generally. I will make that video at the weekend, but right now I have to walk my pupper. And thank you very much for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one.